Hi, this is Brenda Clevenger, founder of Midlife Mona Lisa blog. And this webcast is titled A Toxic Makeup Wake Up Call, My Vein Brush with Death. And here is my story, which I am telling you because I hope it will benefit you in thinking a little bit differently about the products that you buy off the shelf and how it affects you and your family's body. This is what I'm going to cover. What chemicals are in your makeup, how they might impact your health, and I'm going to give you some safe, pure cosmetic alternatives that I've been researching and sampling that you might consider um, using instead of what you might have in your purse or in your cabinet um, currently. And I will start with a disclosure that I am not a physician or a biologist or a radiologist or a scientist um, or a pharmacologist, but I am a woman that had a brush with death that has been researching this heavily since February, reading everything I can get my hands on, and I want to share this with you in hopes that you'll take it in con to, into consideration and um, do your own research for your own health, wellness, and safety. Okay, so here's my wonderful story and beautiful picture. On February 11th, the same night that Whitney Houston died, I was going on a date to a partner yoga class and I wanted to look special. So I decided to put this newly purchased from Sephora Pacifica Crushed Pearl Luminescent Body Butter on my throat and chest. So in my lovely leotard outfit, I would look luminescent. Um, that was not the result. <laughs> so within five minutes of applying that lotion to my neck and chest, I went into an anaphylactic shock and had to drive myself to the ER because I didn't have time to call anyone else and I knew I couldn't breathe any longer and entered the ER with 2% lung capacity before they gurned me back to, uh, to treat me. Luckily, <laughs> coming home, recovering from that, but obviously with a big aha wake-up call, I went to research what the heck was in this product that possibly could have sent me into that downward spiral of an anaphylactic shock attack. And lo and behold, something I've never looked at before, there were 52 ingredients, which is warning number one, if you're buying a product with 52 ingredients, more than likely it's, it's not a healthy product. And... It, you'll see that I've bolded phenyl ethanol, which is a synthetic preservative that you will find in numerous uh, personal care products, was in it. Then, one month later from my ER visit, I went and had a phenomenal massage with my phenomenal masseuse, who uses the most uh, high-quality ingredients in her oils and, and creams, but 15 minutes after coming home from that massage, I, my lungs shut down again, my eyes swelled shut, not nearly as bad as the, the first product, and I thought, what the hey? While asking her what was in that product, I learned that it also had, even though it was a vegan massage cream, phenyl oxal ethanol, which of course is a preservative, which if you're going to buy a product that you don't want to mold or go bad over the course of six months to a year that you might have it, it's, it has to have some sort of preservative, either synthetic or natural in it. However, parabens are highly disruptive to our endocrine system, our, our, horm our hormones. Um, you'll see that I've sourced where I found this information at the bottom of each slide for the Center of Disease Control and the Environmental Working Group has found that women who have died from breast cancer after they've done an autopsy, at the end, they're finding parabens, parabens in their breast tissue. They are finding parabens in the umbilical cords to babies prior to them being born and in infants in their urine after they're born. So where are these parabens coming from and how are they getting into our systems? Well, our skin is our biggest organ, and if you apply anything to your skin, it's going to be absorbed directly into the bloodstream as opposed to anything that we swallow orally is actually uh, filtered through our liver and then enters our systems. So unfortunately, what we put on our skin goes directly into our blood, bloodstream and is 10 times more uh, uh, potent than what we might take orally. 
So as you see this wonderful bag of makeup that could look like that for the next century, things don't go bad because of the preservatives in them. However, maybe we should be mixing our own makeups and, and products um, that do go bad, which a lot of women are doing these days. So, moving on. The phenyl ethanol that was in the first two products that created an allergic reaction to me has been banned in Europe, was banned in the United States in mommy products such as this cream that mothers use when they're, they're nursing because they didn't want it to get into the baby. So why is it still in all the other products? Because it's highly affordable and cheap to use as a preservative with the millions and millions of products that are put out there on the drugstore, grocery store, Target, Walmart shelves. I'm not going to attempt to embarrass myself by reading these um, wonderful uh, names, but you can just scroll down this list to keep a copy of this presentation to look on the back of your lotions, shampoos, conditioners, sunscreen to see if any of these items, any of these synthetic preservatives are in your products because more than likely they are and they're not real healthy on, on your body. So what's the alternative? If you buy something, which obviously we all have our own needs for dry skin, wrinkle-free skin, and we want to look beautiful, what's the alternative if we don't buy something with a synthetic preservative in it? There are preservative-free products that are available at health food stores. People are mixing their own, but they have to be put in the refrigerator or tossed in a relatively short period of time. Or the other alternative would be to find something that has the antimicrobial anti or antioxidant item in it that serves as a preservative, and that would be an essential oil, um, vitamin E oil, rosemary es extract, or grapefruit seed extract. Um, these are more expensive uh, antioxidants that serve as preservatives, so a lot of companies unless they are making smaller quantities of items, obviously aren't going to use them. So who's watching out for us ladies and gentlemen who are applying hundreds of products to our bodies every day since the FDA pretty much moved this into a self-regulated industry in 1938? We have a wonderful organization called the Environmental Working Group, and there's their website, and I check it out often. They have a database online that's called Skin Deep, where you can look up about 67,000 products and find out what the heck is in it that you might not know about. Then there is the Cosmetic Info organization, which is really a more uh, proactive for the makeup industry organization. They formed because they thought the Environmental Working Group was being too scare tactic oriented, so they are on the softer side giving you information. And then there's another organization called Safe Cosmetics Org. So check those out as you're researching your own products. Um, the chemicals we apply daily. This company, Myosin, which is in Europe, did a study and it found out that we are applying 515 chemicals to our face every day and of course we know it's located in makeups and lotions and mouthwashes and just about anything that we uh, apply orally or on our skin. Then they went ahead and put an infographic together. This is also information from the same comp company and I won't go through this body part by body part, but you can of course download this presentation and check it out closer. But it, it certainly makes you think, okay, what if I'm putting a hormone disruptor underneath my armpit and I'm putting something with synthetic preservatives on my eyelids and I'm putting coal tar on my lashes, what is the cumulative effect on my body over the course of a month, over the course of the year, over the course of seven years? Of course, there's her, her lovely lower half, so you can digest that um, on your own time. And this is a picture of me with my lovely magnifying glass, which, believe it or not, I will take into stores, and I will whip it out, and I will analyze everything on a bottle prior to putting it into my shopping basket. But if you're looking for, they have what's called the filthy, the, the dirty dozen, the filthy 15, the dirty 30, Here's just a list of, if you're going to mix anything from your, your 
ingredients of your products, start with these 15. And again, I won't go through them line item by line on them, but you'll, you can see that, you know, lead, um, coal tar, which is a petrochemical, um, mineral oil, which basically suffocates your skin, parabens, which is the synthetic preservatives like the phenoxyl ethanol. All these things um, cumulatively are very toxic for your body to filter and, and condition. Here's another book, potential read for you, the Safe Shoppers Bible. And this is a fascinating fact. Over the last hundred years, the rate of cancer has skyrocketed from one in 800 people to today, one in two men will be diagnosed with cancer, and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer at some point in their life. Why so many people? Well, I, I'm not going to connect the dots, but I'm just going to share what I have, have been learning. Everything has chemicals in it. Even the ones that say that they're for sensitive skin, that they've been tested by dermatologists, um, that they're 100% pure and they're not. Um, this product, Sebamed, which sounded like something that I might turn to, well, the closer I looked at it, it has uh, synthetics, colorants, perfumes, um, ingredients that are on the top 15 filthy list, not so pure. So as I've been researching, what I've found, what i found, and please do your own research, is pretty much what is located on the Walgreens shelf, CVS, uh, Target, Walmart, your local grocery store, is nothing I'm going to continue to buy. I have found to find the purest products with the uh, preservative-free or essential oils in them that I have to go to, to a distributor. So I have been turning to Labry, and I've given the website there. I'm not a distributor of any of these things. I have had people ship me uh, products which I've tried, such as Lulu Blossom, and there's their website. 100% pure, no preservatives, no par parabens, no phylates, um, none of the hormone disruptors. Indigo Wild, which is a local company here in town in Kansas City that makes Zumbars. Once again, 100% pure products without the chemical gunk. Uh, I use Tom's on Main um, toothpaste. I've been using Alba shower gel. Um, but my, my word of warning to you is anything you buy on the mainstream shelf is going to have bad, toxic, at least the dirty dozen in them. So here's a little homework for you in the, the sake of time. Is just go to YouTube, and there's two videos I'd highly recommend that you watch. The first was uh, produced in 2010, and all you have to do is go to the YouTube search bar and type in the story of cosmetics. It's an eight minute video and I think you'll be fascinated by the production of what's going into our toiletries. And then this is actually a, a company that's making their own products but if you go to YouTube and type in organic and toxic free with no spaces that's the name of the channel and you'll find this this video that is fascinating where you'll find that a lot of the Ingredients and chemicals that are in our makeups and toiletries are the same as what's in our garage and in our paint thinners and in our uh, in petrochemical substances. So words of advice is perhaps you should just start by using up what you have in your shower, in your handbag, and then when it's gone, replace it with something that's green, 100% pure, synthetic, preservative free. Because one out of eight of the 82,000 ingredients we use in our personal care products have industrial chemicals in them. Um, foreign estrogen absorbed by the skin, as I mentioned before, is 10 times more potent than oral. Um, so we really have to watch what we're applying to our bodies. All right, so I'm going to do quickly, just for your benefit, for, uh, so you might consider starting from head to toe, how you might <clears throat> start replacing what you currently are using to something a little bit healthier for your body over the long term. So think of Adam and Eve. I mean, 
who knows what they showered with, who knows if they showered, <laughs> but I'm sure they didn't have the substances that we're using today. So my advice is to not migrate towards a brand because you've seen it on television or your girlfriend uses it, but to read the ingredients or if there's no ingredients on the box, go online and search uh, uh, for the ingredients to find out what it does or go to Environmental Working Group to find out what the ingredients, um, if it's on the top 14 filthy list. Okay, so let's start with your hair because your hair is a huge, <laughs> we're starting from your head. I mean, you're putting a ton of products, you know, shampoo, conditioner, spray, gel, thickening, uh, whatever. So I would start, um, if you're using straighteners or smoothers, omit the formaldehyde. Um, and if you're using hair dye, know that there's 5,000 chemicals in it. And dark hair dyes often have coal tar in it. So my advice is I found a product called Essenicity, and there is the distributor on their website that has no ammonia, no silicones, no parabens, and no formaldehyde in it. So ask your colorist or your hairstylist if they can get that for you, and you can feel really good about what you're sitting there in the chair having soak into your head for 30 minutes. Um, your body, being the largest organ, I used to get out of the shower and itch and itch and itch and break out in hives, and I couldn't think what was going on. I thought I had dry skin, and what was going on is I was using a very cheap <clears throat> soap from Dollar General, no less, and it was breaking me out in hives. Um, and God only knows what was in it. So I have replaced my body wash with Alba. Um, Burt's Bees is also a good replacement. Body lotions. Um, if you go to Skincare Authority, they've actually sampled and listed the worst body washes, worst lotions, worst detergents, and worst sunscreens, and then listed the best of all of those. So you can just go down and say, oh, that's on the worst list. This is on the best list. Maybe I'll make some adjustments in my hygiene. Um, moving on to detergents, any name brand detergent, be it uh, Tide or um, I can't even think of any, they all have bad dioxins in them, which even on your rinse cycle does not come out of your clothes. And once you put the clothes on, it's going to uh, transfer to your skin and absorb into your skin. So I have switched since your, your clothing is obviously covering your entire body to seventh generation. And there's plenty of great choices out there to consider for your, your, your detergent. Plus it's better for the environment. All right, sunscreens. They have some bad juju in them. <laughs> they say five out of six chemicals used to block the UV rays in sunscreens is estrogenic. So it's affecting our hormones, a hormone disruptor. And the good news is the Environmental Working Group just came out with a 2012 sunscreen guide. And you can go to their website and, let's see, I didn't put the, the address in there, but if you go to ewg.org, and do a search for sunscreen guide, you'll find that. And there's some good alternatives that um, don't have the toxins in them. Fingernails, moving down to your hands. Um, just watch out for these items. I'm not gonna go through it uh, item by item, but the formaldehyde, which is also found in funeral parlors, is um, going on your nails. And there, fortunately, are good alternatives to that. Um, pretty, from North uh, New York City um, has none of the, uh, the dirty dozen in them for just twelve fifty a bottle, and No Miss Nail, which I've purchased, which is right here, has um, the purple bottle on the right for seven ninety four. Um, doesn't have any of the dirty dozen in them, and I believe OPI has been compliant in taking out some of the dirty dozen out of their products too. All right, your lips. This is an incredible fact that was found from <clears throat> a company in Canada that a woman ingests four pounds of lip, lip products in her life. Um, you have lipstick on, you have lip gloss on, you're eating, you're licking your lips, it gets into your system. And 61% of the U.S. lipsticks have some lead in it. Yes, it's trace. Yes, it's supposed to be too small to matter, but why risk it? 
uh, interesting fact about lip gloss, it is named the most toxic beauty product, bar none, of any of them. So if you're going to make a switch, other than your laundry detergent, maybe you should start with your lip gloss. Um, and again, there's the, uh, some lead in lipsticks is exceeding 10 times the amount allowed by the, the FDA. But it's a self-regulated industry, so companies like L'Oreal and Revlon can do whatever they want and what they put in their products. <clears throat> Here's some good gloss brands that I've researched and have been sampling. Arbonne, which is made in Switzerland, which has none of the synthetics or dirty dozen in it. Uh, Alba, which you can buy at Whole Foods. Labry, which is the distributor that I'm currently buying my shampoo from and my, my face lotion. And 100% Pure, which is a lip gloss company that doesn't even use colorants in their lip gloss. They use um, vegetable pigments. So they're really granola people. Okay, so what's the lessons learned from this wonderful 35-slide PowerPoint? Know what's in the products you're applying. Know what's in the products you clean with, which I didn't have time to cover in this. Know what's in the foods you eat, the synthetics, the hormones, um, uh, the preservatives, because your health depends on it. it, it cumulatively does affect you. Um, shockers. I, I don't mean this presentation to be um, a scare factor, just a wake-up call, as it was for me. 60% of what we apply to our skin ends up in our bloodstream. Hairstylists have the youngest death rate in their occupational group. 80% of the ingredients are linked to immune toxicity. 60% may disrupt hormones. And one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer in today's society. So here's some reading, and there's tons of great books out there. Is This Your Child's World by Doris Rapp. Uh, Cutting the Crap Out of Your Life by Kim Barnone, and she's the uh, skinny bitch author. And Market Shift, which is a downloadable PDF that you can find at the website safecosmetics.com. has great information in it. And that's just for starters. Please email me if you would like more guidance on what to read. So that is it for my makeup wake-up call and my vein brush with death. This is Brenda Clevenger, and I'm going to sign off here. If you liked anything, if you learned anything, if you found this presentation remotely valuable, you could do me the hugest favor by doing one of the three things below or all three. Go find me on Facebook under Midlife Mona and click like. Uh, go to Twitter and follow me on Midlife Mona. And please go to midlifemonalisa.com and sign up for our updates. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about this presentation, don't hesitate to email me. And my email is midlifemonalisa at gmail.com. I'll say it again. Midlife Mona Lisa, where storybook endings begin, at gmail.com.